I'm going to show you how to make a shape as continental style loaf. Uh, I've made up the very basic mixture of, for the fate bread. That's been done using the 500 gram packet of all purpose mix. Put a baking tray and you, all you do is simply just lightly grease it. And then take your mixture, use a spatula to scrape it down from the bowl onto your baking tray. Don't waste any. Make sure it all goes on there. Really, just in one lump. You can make two, you can divide it into two if you want. But I think it looks lovely, a large loaf. You need a little bit of extra fate or purpose mix. Just sprinkle, a little, take a little in your fingers, sprinkle it on the top. And then just gently use your hands just to make it neater. And that's, that's all you do. Take a clean large bag, large polythene bag. And put the whole tray into the bag. of the bag, grab the ends, twist it over and then just tie, tie it in a knot. That will keep it warm, keep it draft proof and keep the moisture in. I'm preheating my oven, gas mark 6, 200 degrees and all you need to do is to put that either on top of your stove uh, put it on a sunny windowsill, um, in, on a nice, in a nice conservatory, sunny conservatory, anywhere, anywhere that's warm, just for maybe, I don't know, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, until it rises, till it proves, and then it'll be ready to go into the oven. Um, it's very difficult to tell you how long it's going to take to prove because it depends on how warm your kitchen is. Sometimes on a cold day, it could take 40 minutes to prove. On a nice sunny day, warm day, uh, it could take 10 minutes, but on, on average it takes 15 to 20. This is the fake continental loaf. Now it should be ready to go into the oven. It's been proving on the top of my stove for about 15 minutes now. You, with this loaf you don't want to over-prove it. Um, the, the oven's been preheated. So just before it goes into the oven, I'm just going to take a, a wet knife. I'm just going to just put a couple of marks in the top. Just to give it a, a little pattern. This is optional. You don't have to do it. But I think it looks quite nice when it's baked. And that goes into the oven. It'll take about 40 to 45 minutes. Now it's been 10 minutes since the continental style loaf is, was in the oven. I'm just going to show, I just want you to see how much it rises quite quickly. But if you just come closer, Katie, you can actually see the, the bread is just about taking on a colour. Not too much at all because it needs to cook long and slow, really. Uh, just, just in little patches, it's it's taken on a, a slight colour. But I'm going to put that back in. If it has a lot of colour on it uh, at the 10 minute stage, you know the oven is a little bit too hot, turn the oven down. It's better to turn the oven down um, rather than have it cook too quickly. This loaf is now done. It's been in just 40 minutes. As you can see, it's nice and risen. Looks really lovely and underneath, oh yeah, underneath it's quite crispy and brown so that, that, that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to transfer it now to a cooling rack. And there you have baked continental style loaf. This is the continental style loaf that's gone cold now but I just want to show you 
what I made out using the exactly the same recipe and the method that I used for the larger one. But instead of putting it all onto one baking tray, I divided it just roughly by eye. I didn't measure it or anything. Just, just used two baking trays to make two smaller loaves. It's just that I think maybe some people might find it more useful to have two smaller loaves than, than one large one. So I'm going to make um, bruschetta. I'm going to show you how to make. This is our favourite way of serving this, this loaf. take a couple of slices and as you can see it's lovely if you can just imagine that um, as, as a sandwich it's absolutely gorgeous I'm just going to cut it in half and which is I'm just going to pop these into the toaster and then you just want tomatoes you want to use it the coarse side of your grater and just grate the tomato make a fresh tomato pulp and you just go right just be careful with your fingers when you get close you just go right down to the skin and that can be thrown away Best to use very ripe tomatoes if you can. They seem to have a bit of a sweeter flavour. And then I'm just going to season that with a little bit of salt and pepper. You can add some fresh herbs if you want to at this stage as well, which is quite nice. You've got a nice bit of basil. That would be nice. Just stir that round. And then you just want to get a clove of garlic and just peel the garlic. The toast is almost ready, it needs to go down just another bit. Now you can either chop the garlic, if you like a lot of it, if you like a strong garlicky flavour, you can chop it into fine pieces and, and use it like that, or you just cut it in half so that it's quite juicy inside. Okay, so nice hot toast. And get your cut clove of garlic and just rub it over the surface because it's nice fresh garlic it will just kind of disappear And then a drizzle of really good olive oil. Ooh, not too much, just enough to give it a nice flavour. And then the tomato, just spoon that on top. Be quite generous with the tomato. So, so nice for, for a really good lunch, any time really of the year, but especially nice in the summer. More tomato. And then, if you like olives, it's lovely to have a few green olives with it. And maybe a little bit of, little bit of salad, a few leaves on the side. What could be nicer than that? Absolutely delicious. And that's fake bruschetta.